my name is Christine Dahl Nielsen and I'm the director of the uh, Norway Arts Council and uh, you have been invited in here to talk about development of art projects in the <coughs> Arctic which is a beautiful open title and you know whenever there's an arts council or an <coughs> arts funding body in the room and artists on the other side uh, you expect us to now pronounce a new funding scheme for the Arctic. Uh, that's not what we're going to do. Uh, but this is certainly um, an interesting place for us to be. And I thank you for coming and listen, and I hope you have a lot of questions. What I did, uh, some of you heard me yesterday talking about uh, uh, possibilities and potential working and collaborating more closely in the Arctic region. And then what I did this morning is that I... I put uh, these colleagues of mine together with more colleagues. We had representatives from all eight nations in the Arctic region and I put them in a room and they were stuck there for two and a half hours. Uh, and then we had some really interesting discussions about how we work because we work very differently um, and what we can take uh, with us from this summit. Um, so we're going to share some of that with you and we're just going to basically continue this uh, conversation that we had this morning and we're going to be very informal and whenever you feel like asking a question just feel free to to do so but what I'll start with is um, to have um, a very short introduction from each and every one of you because we I'm uh, representing an arts council there aren't arts councils as such in each nation in the Arctic region, but there are funding bodies and agencies and structures alike. So what I'll do is that I'll give you each approximately three, four minutes each to present yourself and uh, your agency. And I'll move away because I'm sitting right in front of you. So first out is Stephen Loft from the Canadian Council. And I'll uh, stand over here somewhere. Um, uh, thank you, Christine. Um, Sego, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Loft. Um, I am of the uh, Ganyangahaga Nation, uh, more also known as Mohawk, of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy uh, in the land we now call Canada. Uh, I first want to uh, acknowledge um, that we're meeting today and gathering today on the, the traditional territory of the Sami people. And I want to uh, bring Greetings from uh, my elders, um, the leaders from my community, uh, to my Sami brothers and sisters, uh, and also to bring greetings from uh, my nation uh, to, to, to the land uh, known as Norway as well. Um, I work at the, um, the Canada Council for the Arts, uh, which is the national public arts funding body in Canada. Um, we are uh, an arm's length agency. We provide funding directly to artists and arts organizations across Canada. Um, each of our provinces and territories also have their own arts councils, but we are the national body. Um, and my particular role at the, the Canada Council is um, I'm the director of the Indigenous Arts Programs, which we call uh, Creating, Knowing and Sharing the Arts and Cultures of First Nations. Inuit and Métis peoples. And First Nations, Inuit and Métis are the three indigenous groups that, uh, that are from the land uh, uh, we call Turtle Island uh, and also known as Canada now. Um, so I'm happy to talk about uh, funding to indigenous uh, uh, peoples but also uh, funding to uh, artists uh, and organizations across Canada and our international collaborations. Thank you. Thank you. And you also have a new strategic plan where you are aiming to work more internationally. We do. Uh, yeah. we, we have a new strategic plan and our, make, where we've made four major commitments. Um, one of it, which is to uh, the, uh, the relationship, a nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous peoples. Uh, and also uh, to engage more internationally, uh, uh, to take Canadian artists and, and practices uh, globally, but also to bring uh, uh, artists uh, from uh, other nations to Canada, and also to encourage collaboration between artists and arts organizations uh, from Canada and, and others as well. Um, and then uh, our third strategic pro uh, commitment is around digital transformation. And then uh, our fourth commitment is to increase our support uh, to artists and arts organizations. Uh, and happily, I can report on that one, that uh, we've made major gains. We've had our budget doubled uh, by the Canadian government. Uh, 
uh, and we're exceptionally proud of it and happy to uh, report that. So, mm. And your Prime Minister doubled your budget. He did indeed. In one go. In one go. So, yeah, we have a lot more money to give out. I unfortunately wasn't allowed to bring my blank checks with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on camera now. I don't have them. We have something called VIPs. Yes. <laughs> but, but we can go in the hallway yes. and I can... <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Steve. Uh, we'll move on to, to Sweden and Stefan Forsell, who's the director of the Swedish Arts Council. Yes, and actually the title is a Director General, and I love the, the word uh, general because it really means general. Mm -hmm. in, in general? No, 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 no. And actually, the word comes from that, and this, this expression says actually from the military it says, the general do not know, but he knows who knows. <laughs> and actually, in, in a sense, that is my role. I'm not an expert in all the fields that we work in, but I have a, a great staff, a group of staff, that actually I know is expert in a lot of different fields. And my authority works in all fields apart from film. So that's my role, which I love. And it's an authority, approximately, it's a, we're 80 people, but subsidies we give away in most of Sweden is approximately 220 million euro. So overall, it's a lot of money, uh, and um, the the system we are, as we spoke this morning as well. At, we th I think arts council in a way we look alike, you know, some sense, but then there are different ruling uh, how we work in different countries. And in Sweden, basically by law, I cannot interfere in the the task that we are receiving. Uh, and once I have received the task from the minister, the minister cannot interfere in our authority's decision. So it's very clear line what they do and what we do. And in, in many senses it's very practical. Mm. And it's an arm's length principle. And then the next step. Mm. So we get the obligations or the tasks from the minister and um, once per year. And then it's, we have to do it and make the decision. And then it's the question of arm's length. To be have a vital art scene that is free, but still there is some rules, and that's the discussion. How much rules should we put on the art scene when they at the same time should be free? So I think I stop with that. And the Sami community is definitely a part that we work with. We have we work min with minorities, and the Sami in Sweden is part of that, even if it's, in a way it's a nation by itself, and we support it the art scene to some extent of, of the Sami. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. So, so far we've had two councils and now we move on to Iceland and you do not have a council as such. We have a representative from the Ministry of Science. Yeah, my name is, thank you, thank you Christine and thank you for being, allowing me to be here. My name is Ragnheiður Helga Þórarinsdóttir and I'm from the Ministry of Education, Science and Culture, with the Stress and Culture. Okay, because it says only science in the program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, well it uh, is that's interesting, yeah. So you yeah, have science, education and, and culture, culture in yes. one ministry. Also. And in fact, when you, if you go to the countries like uh, Iceland, Greenland, Faroe Islands, all of, all, they all have the same thing. I remember it was mm -hmm. in Sweden like that, but they, the person that was both a Minister of Culture and Education complained so much, it was such a heavy duty. But that was an extra remark. <laughs> I, come from, I come from the Department of Culture, and um, as we are talking about how many people are working, the, the Ministry has 75 people approximately, and we are 10 in the culture. And there are three secretaries, so you can... Okay, but um, the Ministry of Culture is... is um, not funding anything directly. We, we, the, the, the funding to, to art and culture go through institu institu cultural institutions and to, to funds on different, uh, in different arts type, musical, theater and things like that. Um, and then um, uh, to, to uh, uh, to, to, to support the, the cultural work in the, the, the country, also in the, in the countryside, there are, co there are contracts to the, to, to the municipal organization in each part of the country, and they are seven. Um, so the, the ministry is, uh, is, is working with, through, through legislation, 
and uh, through these contracts. And uh, we should not be supporting anything directly, but uh, we unfortunately... Oh, this is something. Um, <laughs> of course, we are a very small community and, and the minister tend then have, have a tendency to, to support some very important projects of that. that. But officially it, it is not like that, because we try to keep the arm's length principle and, and the, the equal right to get support. Um, the, the, we, we that work at the ministry, at, at the cultural department, we are all, of course we are supposed to be generalists, and we are, but we are also all experts on our field. And uh, I feel a little bit insecure here, because I, my field is cultural heritage and literature. My colleague in the next office is having film, and the other one is having arts, and the third one is having um, uh, children and festivals. So we, we are all work, and we have all worked with that as profession in our earlier life. Um, we have a, a cultural policy for the first time that was agreed upon in 2013 where we stress among the culture with young people and digital um, culture and, and the, the main aim of this cultural policy is to ease, so to, to make uh, the scene for the arts work good but we don't interfere in what people are doing but we want to make it better for the artists to to work. And we also participate in very much in international cooperation and uh, uh, the, the most prominent is, is the Nordic cooperation, but we are also involved in UNESCO and the Council of Europe. Um, um, so, uh, and, and the, in, in the, the cultural department, our culture concept includes also sports and youth policy. So of these, uh, these uh, eight experts, there are one chef and two people not working with arts or directly or culture. So, but um, yeah, of course it is the policy making that is the main, and legislation work that is the main tasks of our, our um, and we are also, uh, at the department, department, we have the UNESCO, both the conventions, the cultural conventions, they are on my table, but my colleague is a secretary general of, general of, <laughs> of UNESCO National Commission. So, so we have a lot of different tasks. Great, thank you. Thank and that's usually what sums up cultural policy in many countries, <coughs> it's funding and leg leg legis legislation. International, Nordic, and, and national. So, um, moving on to Finland, you had an arts council yes, for many did. years, but now you have a new organization called Taike. Yeah. So, um, Eva Maria Hakola, can you tell us about how it works? Thank you. Yes, uh, four and a half years ago, established this um, uh, art promotion center of Finland. It, it used to be the art council before. Uh, and it has a uh, 50 years history. Um, as an executive agency for uh, Finnish Ministry of Education and Culture, the Arts Promotion Centre of Finland carries out the ministry policy. Um, this is the reason why the centre does not have any specific uh, policy or directed actions uh, only for Arctic area or Arctic um, uh, our culture or Arctic uh, artists. However, uh, we do recognize uh, its unique uniqueness and appreciate its value. Um, in practice, um, Art Promotion Center have two instruments to support art, artists and culture. Uh, these two instruments are pure money, of course, funds, uh, like awarding grants and prizes to professional artists and subsidize to communities uh, in the field of arts. And another instrument um, is developing work 
we have a um, what unique system where we employ 40 professional artists um, for a limited time uh, to make uh, development work for our development programs. Uh, they do not do their own artistic work, uh, but they direct their uh, expertise for the art field benefits. Um, it's quite unique network uh, of expertise through whole uh, Finland. So, uh, in a way, we are an expert agency, and our mission is to uh, promote the arts on both national and international levels. Uh, and we have over 20 years of experience of the cooperating with the uh, parents region. Uh, but now we have also one of the development program uh, focus on strength and cooperation in and between in the Nordic countries. Uh, part of that is to strengthen the Arctic art cooperation in the creative sectors. Um, and I decided to uh, share uh, one of my dream with you today here. So I have a dream. Um, <laughs> as, <laughs> yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have this um, special system. Um, we have these uh, professional <coughs> artists working in the center for uh, art field. Uh, they are called regional artists, which is a, a bit odd na name, I know, but uh, they have a long history, and I'm not going to share that at, at the moment. But um, uh, we always uh, have one regional artist for Sami culture. So, um, COE works in a development program of multiculturalism and mobility. So, uh, among other things, the program carries out our international uh, projects. <coughs> so, my dream is that someday um, our regional artist for the Sami culture could uh, have something like a colleague from other Nordic, Nordic countries. Uh, so that they could promote art and culture in cooperation projects over the borders uh, of Nordic countries in the Sami region. Um, I, be, I believe, um, actually, no, um, I have seen it among uh, our regional artist work uh, in Finland that um, in these matters, people to people uh, cooperation are very effective. Um, and here I think we might be able to see or find a calculation formula where uh, one plus one might be more than two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for sharing that with us. It's a really interesting system. You employ 40 artists for a period of three to five years. Yes. Yeah. And they work in the regions in, in Finland yeah. um, and they're basically paid by you. Exactly, yeah. yes. And uh, what what's we aim with that is some kind of positive uh, change mm. in structure perhaps, or in attitudes perhaps, or some sharing knowledge perhaps. So they are doing a very much different kind of networking between different actors and stakeholders. Mm. But they do what they want. But they, they do exactly. They do what they want to do. Uh, actually, to do. Uh, in, in a way, we, we uh, it's it's halfway because we have these development Technical. programs, so we have certain kind of strategy for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a agreement with ministry per, per month performance uh, agreement. So we have a big kind of task mm. to achieve. Uh, but uh, in these very wide frames, they actually are employed uh, from their own background specialty. So they actually are the mastermind in this project, but where they see that, okay, there is a bad connection between these groups, perhaps in certain region or locally or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting structure. We don't have the similar one in, in our country, and I don't think any other of us have it. So, so these are some of the countries that we gathered this morning. We also had Russia with us. We had Alaska State Council for the Arts on Skype. Uh, we have Greenland 
and Denmark. So we were actually all the uh, the eight Arctic uh, nations okay. gathered together. And uh, just to follow up on that conversation, one of the things that we did discuss is that um, artists traditionally are not so interested in borders. Uh, and artists have a tendency of moving a little bit more quickly than uh, arts councils. Uh, so how can we uh, be able to, how can we have flexible systems uh, that make sure that we, uh, uh, that we see the developments and that we can support it quickly? And one of the things that is a bit of a challenge is that arts councils and arts funding bodies are national institutions which means that our remit is basically to focus on funding Norwegian artists uh, or Swedish or Danish or whatever. Uh, so I think it's really interesting if we can have a discussion on, on the international task of an arts council. And I'd like to start with you, Steve, because you have that specifically now in your strategic plan. And I'd like for you three also to follow up on, on how exactly you work internationally, because that's of interest, I think, for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just testing. Yeah. Thumbs up. Perfect. Okay. Take it away. Thank you. Um, yeah, one of the interesting things um, we've uh, in Canada at the Canada Council for the Arts for the last three years, we've been going through a major transformation uh, of how we fund uh, artists and arts organizations. Um, and because we realized that what we call our old model, which was based, uh, which was discipline based, and we ended up with ten. Um, mechanisms uh, within the council that were, were discipline based primarily uh, that had in total over 140 then little programs within them um, and you know every time we needed to add a new practice or, or, or some issue came up that where people weren't able to access uh, the programs of the council, we would add a new program. And so this quickly, of course, becomes unsustainable. And we, we become a very bloated organization that, that doesn't react uh, well to change and also is very proscriptive to artists because these programs become so very minutely uh, controlled. So if you're this kind of artist doing this kind of work uh, from this region of Canada or whatever, this is where you go. Oh, but wait a minute. No, maybe you go over here. Um, and, it, and, and we realized that, uh, you know, uh, the Canada Council is 60 years old, um, that it's something that happened uh, over time. So we had to break that model. Uh, and so what we did is uh, completely change that to a non-disciplinary uh, model, much more flexible, uh, much more able to uh, be nimble, uh, and uh, we hope, because it's a brand new model, uh, much more efficient uh, for artists and also uh, gives us the ability to, uh, to react in a much more uh, uh, proactive way to changes uh, from the arts community because I think it, the uh, point is, is well taken that, uh, that we always lag behind our artists and our arts organizations who are connected to what's really happening and they you know, want to engage in hybrid practices, they want to work in different ways, they want to you know, look outside of you know, prescriptive borders, whether those borders are uh, in the council and its programs or borders in, writ large. Um, so, with uh, our new commitments uh, to the new funding model and our commitments to in, uh, an, a, a much more uh, present, uh, to be much more present internationally, um, we've set up a couple of mechanisms to be able to do that in a much more reactive way. So, one of our new program areas is specifically around in, uh, international engagement. So, to get Canadian artists and organizations out into the global but also to bring other artists and organizations to Canada, but also to encourage collaboration so that we don't stand in the way, our structures don't stand in the way of artists and organizations doing what they must do, um, which is to, to work in, in the ways that, that, that reflect who they are and who they want to be and show that back to us. So um, we've created, it's called Arts Abroad, that's a big program uh, that has a bunch of funding in it. Um, but we also um, have created a new department called um, uh, Partnerships and International uh, Collaboration uh, so that we can also engage in partnerships that aren't based in our granting program system uh, because that's how we generally get our money out. Artists apply to us, they, it's adjudicated in a peer assessment process, all wonderful, it's a fantastic model. But um, when you need to do things that are outside of that, those programs, how do you do it? So now we've set up a partnership framework 
where we can engage in uh, the kinds of partnerships that we know artists want to uh, want to explore. Uh, so residencies, uh, for example, uh, uh, partnerships with other arts councils or other bodies so that we can more freely allow artists to engage with, uh, with uh, their uh, contemporaries uh, all over the world. And, and we, hope, we hope that uh, by putting some emphasis on this and really making sure that, we're, that we are present in places like this, that we can really engage in a, in, a, in a much different way. And certainly for us, um, I mean, Canada is a, a, a gigantic landmass, uh, 10 million square kilometers. I mean, it's not hard to even uh, conceptualize. And 40% and of that is in the Arctic. Four million square kilometers of, of, of our nation is in the Arctic. So if we are not engaging in the Arctic in really profound, uh, fundamental ways, um, we are not serving our communities well, and specifically for us, um, the, the majority of, of um, the people who live in our Arctic are indigenous, uh, either uh, First Nations uh, of, uh, primarily, or the largest group being Inuit, um, but that we really need to connect the communities uh, from the north um, with, uh, in, in a circumpolar uh, way. So um, one of the reasons um, I'm here is to explore the possibilities of creating those kinds of partnerships and creating those kinds of linkages that um, could allow our artists and arts organizations to uh, engage in new and exciting and innovative ways. That's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's literally a revolution going on in Canada because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've gone from 130 small programs, which is a visual arts uh, and then music and performance, dance, you know, all arts councils have their silos or silos. What do you say in English? Silos. 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 You, get, you get what I mean. You, you know? <coughs> yeah. And you've taken them all away and you've made six big silos. So six big, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which are connected in, in a much more uh, yeah. uh, interesting way. Mm -hmm. Um, because they're outcome oriented and based um, and, and it allows for a lot more uh, movement between them whereas as you say it used to be in one silo but what if you you know what if you're a dance artist who wants to make a film um, with, with a colleague from, from Norway there was no place for you now you don't have to worry about that how about that? Taking away the silos. Yeah, I can hear the noise from the organizations. It's a good chance for you. It's a very good test. It's really, really interesting. I'm glad I came here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you have a full mandate to work internationally. Yeah. yeah, so that's no problem. So Canada, check. <laughs> Sweden, Iceland, Finland, whoever wants to share on working internationally, do you have the mandate? Can you do? Sectoral. That is always a problem. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a dancer is working with a singer, if they are doing a project, how, how are the, the, the fund that funds uh, she, as a state charge. State charge. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, they don't support it because it's, it's, uh, it's uh, also music, and, and the music fund doesn't support it because it's a state charge. That, that can be a challenge, mm -hmm. but uh, we have, for example, a special fund that supports art music uh, for export of Icelandic music, and, and all the others, it's also about visual arts, and that, that is not the problem, and also the Icelandic, and I think most of the Nordic artists are very good, they have this Nordic uh, fund funding, and uh, use it a lot, and then there is a, a bilateral funding too. So I don't think uh, this international cooperation is, is a big, big problem in our, uh, and I'm not thinking, of course we have some mobility funds, but I think of projects that are, are supposed to go abroad. And I would like to mention, because we are now here in Westerol, in Hasta, that there has for, for 15 years been a a marvelous cooperation between Westerolen and East Iceland, mm -hmm. and uh, it's um, it's unbelievable how much what they have done and, and how what they have uh, got through and, and doing and and this was something that was not started uh, by any authority or agency or what council or whatever it was the local 
people, I think it started by people from Westerland visiting Iceland in 2002. And they have had this cooperation since 2004 and it's still going strong. And they have included Canada, no, Scotland. No, I'm sorry, Donegal in Ireland. Ireland is it. And that's also, that they have got something for this. Because I think the, 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 the main thing we are thinking about in this polar, circumpolar cooperation, of us, that is how can we fund it? How can we give support it? Because, well, ministry do not think, but you are not thinking of making the, the project. That, the, that is the artist that do that. Mm -hmm. So they have the ideas. The ideas is not, are not from us. <laughs> so the question is, how can we support that? And I suggested yes that we should broaden the Nordic cooperation. Mm -hmm. to, fit, to further build on the yes, Nordic cooperation, yes. to, to go more, uh, to include Canada, Russia and the US <coughs> and extend that network. Um, so we've had a really, I mean, time flies. There's only nine minutes left. Uh, and I said yesterday that our single most important tool is to listen, which means <laughs> answer the question. Uh, but uh, at least uh, we, just to sum up really quickly, what we have decided on is that we are very interested in working together and we all see the circumpolar area as interesting and also part of responsibility that some arts councils have uh, good experience with and some have not been working that much with it. So we're going to continue that and we're meeting again in in Rovaniemi. But be, uh, give us some advice, uh, have some questions please uh, before we have to sum up because someone else is using the room. Yeah. Hi. 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 My name is uh, Irina. I work for the County Council of Troms, this region. Uh, and um, and uh, these tasks you are talking about, we see them overall and it's uh, for the artist that comes to us, it's a pattern to finance project. It's always a pattern. And what, what we try to see is where, where can we help them up because it costs a lot mm -hmm. to make projects. We all forgot this. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, for example, on visual art, we take a role. So we take the um, uh, financial support to make uh, employment for the culture from in the Nordic, the EU system for Interreg, uh, it's a lot of programs there, mm -hmm. and also uh, the Russian program that we have up here in the north, the Bodingskult. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we see is that we in a way make ourselves as a platform, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in different, these artists through artist residence programs, for example, <coughs> they meet up here and then they go further. They can, with this system, go even though from the east to the west or north south with this system. But uh, it's, um, it's for them very necessary to have an organization or someone to take care of that. Uh, I think this Canadian idea is. It's a lovely idea because of, uh, <laughs> and I see you're smiling. Uh, we should look into <laughs> that in Norway because <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's also like you're talking about cross border projects. It's something around that. We do also have experience up here with the artists. And uh, yesterday you met this um, Jörker, do you remember? That was in the conference. And she's going to have a one year contract with us now. That's one example of working like you. So you have 40 of them, yeah. we have just mm -hmm. one. But we have musicians that maybe are in the 50% <coughs> and then can integrate different projects and make more projects. So, yeah, it was not a question. Mm -hmm. But well, maybe a question for you uh, yeah. from the Norwegian side, because we have, like maybe you have in the other countries, like it's the foreign affairs have some money and the culture department has some money, mm -hmm. you know? And, and this also, you in this Canadian system, you have brought this together, or yeah? Um, somewhat. Yeah. Um, we still have that division, obviously. Um, and I'm glad that you liked the way we're going at the Canada Council. I will say one thing, though, um, that we really also have to think. You know, I mentioned you know the Arctic is such an important part of us in terms of landmass, but small number of people. And in the past, um, the Canada Council and 
uh, by extension the Ministry of Culture, has not done a, a really wonderful job of connecting with um, the artists and the arts infrastructure of the North. It's one of the things that we have uh -huh. examined quite uh -huh. extensively over the last few years as part of our transformation to really acknowledge that we have not done that well. We haven't really helped build an arts and cultural infrastructure uh, in the North, and that's one of the things that we are committed to, but yeah, we have to do this in a very vastly different way. We have to um, create the uh, right environment to create uh, a body of, uh, of arts professionals from the North, again, primarily, uh, I would say indigenous, because that really needs to be where it happens. And we haven't done a good job of that. Uh, of my friend and colleague, uh, Heather Gloliorti here, uh, uh, who is a, a doctor of Gloliorti, a uh, professor at Concordia University, uh, uh, and, uh, and a new woman, is leading a new project um, that we're working on with as well to really develop that infrastructure. And those are the kind of exciting that we can engage in now. So that's kind of how the new system can work, I think, um, specifically in the Arctic, and, uh, uh, you know, again, try to con do a better job of connecting those artists and organizations uh, to, to uh, other Arctic artists and organizations. So, we haven't done it well, we are committed to it, but, uh, but in a very different way. It's got to be from, um, from the people who live there, and I think mm -hmm. that was mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. in several keynotes yeah, yeah, yeah. yesterday, yeah. is it's the people who live in there that must determine their future. We just have to find ways to support it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And quicker and more flexible yeah, exactly, ways. Exactly. So it's not just the lack of the international, but also the cross-sectoral that you mentioned. Yeah. Yes, um, I'd like to... Um, I, I might be a bit uh, not that clear when you mentioned... Uh, mm. uh, actually, the regional artists I mentioned, mm. they are acting more like your organization. Mm -hmm. When we, we pay the salary, mm. they are not allowed to do their own artwork. No. But they are brokers, kind, yeah. kind of brokers between yeah. the society yeah, yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, organizations. So they are looking for perhaps funds mm -hmm. and how to deal with mm -hmm. all the application perhaps. Not uh, the application which come to our organization, but the others. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the kind of... Sh they are more like a consults or project managers perhaps, or mm -hmm. producer in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. but they are not really do the that kind yeah. of project. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. We yeah. have two minutes left, so I give you one minute each. Ingi mm -hmm. and Ricarda. Ricarda. So mm -hmm. Ingi, one minute first. each. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but that's what we have. Um, sorry, yeah. it's not up to me. But uh, uh, and, and then we can see each other afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. just not in the room. I'm the artistic director of Hologoland uh, Theater or the Arctic Theater in Tromsø, which is the biggest um, institution for performing arts in the north of Norway. So I think it's fantastic that you all start to talk together and I just want to say one thing. Remember that these big institutions has the infrastructure. And I think it's about time that we start to talk about this because it's been a big um, distance in between the Art Council and the theatres. Because we do have fantastic venues, workshops, a way of getting people. We are also a touring organization. And I want to share that with more people. So I think it's important that you sort of just... I just wanted to say that. Yeah, but that's so a very please. good point. Yes. And we also talked about that in the group, that we should build on existing <coughs> infrastructure. Good. Yes. Yeah, good. Please. Yeah, hello, my name is Ricarda. I'm from Berlin. I'm the artistic director of Nordwind Festival. Uh, we are working with all these funding bodies now since 10 years. And uh, what I'm a little bit puzzled of sometimes is when we're talking about international work, that very often, like we face this like every second year, that um, you have, I don't know, I think it's a political decision. You have one focus, for example, on South Bank, then it was the JFK LA um, mm -hmm. Center, mm -hmm. and then a lot of money when it goes uh, when you talk about internalization goes into such events, which I I think it's interesting. I think it's great that you're present there, but I think it's very important that you strengthen partnerships which exist for a long time in the countries itself and abroad and that you find more alliances which are reliable now for a long time 
and not not so much like this one day wonder or one time wonder mm -hmm. and then it's a <coughs> wonderful firework a fantastic artist and then you move to another part and of then the, world. the party mm -hmm. ends and <laughs> I, I we agree with you and i just have to stress that these are initiatives by the nordic council of ministers yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the arts yes. councils know, are not initiated i know but i yeah. just wanted to stress this mm -hmm. out because i, I discussed this yes. a lot with people mm. in germany or or abroad and also with the nordic colleagues so this is something I sometimes question how much sustainability is there guaranteed that should be guaranteed. We agree. We agree. We agree. Yeah. We agree. Yeah. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's 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 it. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, we'll just continue from here. Thank you. These people will still be around. We just have to.